Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Lisa Snowden McRae, Editor-in-Chief of the Baltimore Beat, a brand new independent weekly here in Baltimore City. I've been working in Baltimore as a journalist for about 14 years. I wrote for Baltimore City Paper, an independent paper which shut down in early November. I also wrote for the Baltimore Sun before I took over at the Beat last month. The Beat exists to fulfill that space left, that City Paper left behind as an alternative voice here in the city. Full disclosure, the Baltimore Beat has also been working very closely with the Real News Network. For now, we're working out of the Real News downtown Baltimore offices and also running stories written by Real News reporters in the paper. I'm here in the studio with Paul Jay, CEO and senior editor of the Real News Network. We're going to talk a little bit about our partnership, about the state of journalism right now, and what that means for Baltimore. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Okay, well, I want to start big and go in a little bit. Um, I almost feel like you and I should be, should be fighting a little bit. There's this tension that exists right now between print and video. Um, I know back a few months ago, MTV News, who had hired like a bunch of very high profile, very smart and talented writers, let them all go because they wanted to pivot to video. And a few other places have done that too. Um, some of those places are actually pivoting back to print now. So I want to talk a little bit about why you decided to go into video and how you've made that successful so far. When we started The Real News, the first thing you really have to answer is who's the audience? Mm -hmm. And there's already a lot of independent alternative news. I think we frame things a little differently than others do. How so? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let me, let me do the first part, then I'll sure, let me do sure. the second part about how so. That's a good question. Um, but most of it's in text. There is a stratum of the population that's, that's educated, that's plugged into the, uh, to culture. Um, they're used to reading. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a significant stratum. But I think most of the working class, most ordinary people, of, of course they read, although it's, one shouldn't forget in the United States, apparently 30, 35% of the population is functionally illiterate. Mm. Um, but most people uh, get their news through TV. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if they're getting it online, the larger, bigger sources of, of news are the same people from television online, whether it's CNNs or, or others. Um, younger people are more online, more looking for alternative sources, but th that's not the majority. Mm -hmm. So when we started The Real News, we wanted to do it in video because the power of television is what needed to be challenged, and the power of daily television news. Uh, the daily TV news uh, is where everybody goes, even people who read. When, when big events break, people go to television to see live coverage, and all the pundits are there, and all the analyzers are there, and they start framing how you look at the story right in that moment. Yeah. So our thesis was, one, be in video, because the majority of people want to watch news, not, not just not read it. Uh, mm. Um, and two, in the big breaking news moments, we want to compete with TV, which has everybody goes to. Um, the, 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 now, we are also building out the tech side right now. It's a part of the relationship with Baltimore Beat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've hired Vaynerd Woods, who worked at City Paper, and uh, is also helping with the relationship with the Beat. Uh, we do want to have more text because it's faster to read. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have transcripts with all our videos, and uh, something like 30, 40 percent, I think, of our audience read the transcripts rather than watch the video, just because it's faster. Uh, so we do want to strengthen our, our tech side, but our most important mission is to get into working families, ordinary people who come home really tired at night, mm -hmm. and start engaging them. In, in watching our news, because now to get to your other question, because the way we frame it, I think, and, and I'm not saying we're the only ones that do it, but there's not very many that do it. Um, we start with the proposition, or, uh, which I don't think it's a proposition, I think it's the reality. We live in a society that's divided into classes. Yeah. And you can't report on anything if you're really going to give any serious context without asking the question, for whom? So it doesn't matter whether it's policing or whether it's school policy or whether it's climate policy or international forum policy, you got to say for whom. And for whom is mostly to do with 
you've got elites, a tiny percentile, you know, 1% everyone talks about, but in truth, 10 to 15% of people in this country are doing pretty well mm -hmm. and are rather happy with the status quo. And, and it may even be more than that number. And then you have everybody else. So we, we talk, a, we always try to frame things in that way. And then we also don't see ourselves as just reporters. We're not here just to report on what happened. Um, we also think that part of our job is what do real solutions look like? Mm. And, and we're trying to do more and more of that, that, that we don't want to just describe something that's wrong without talking about, well, here's what a, a real effective solution looks like. And not only what a solution looks like within today's politics, like what's possible within this city hall or this state capital or Washington. What if you had a kind of popular people's takeover of the city, for that example? Mm -hmm. What would that policy look like? So in video, because primarily we think ordinary people will engage with it more. It's interesting. Um, I know for, for us, we actually just had a staff meeting on Tuesday, and one of our signs of success was that uh, Brandon, our, uh, our managing editor, was saying that he saw some copies of the beat, like, in the trash, like on the ground, because for us, it was very, very important for us to have a physical paper in our hand and that you could hold in your hand, not just be a, a website, which could be cheaper and easier to produce, but like it's that same, that same working class aim, which is that sometimes people don't have internet. Sometimes people don't have like a smartphone, like you and I have, or like I pretty much used to live. So like people can get copies of the paper you know, sitting at the bus stop, going in to get a sandwich somewhere, sitting at the bar somewhere. We actually just had someone tweeted us a picture of somebody riding the bus reading a beat. So like that's kind of like the thing that I think excites me about this partnership. The other thing is that it kind of feels like we are, us working together is good because the, the beat and I, we're three, a staff, an editorial staff of three. So we literally can't cover some things in the city. So. It feels very much like we're crafting this alternative, like, journalistic system almost. Like, um, when, I, when I logged on as editor, you were already on board. So I guess what made you want to sign on to, to kind of make this thing happen? Well, working with a, a physical print paper mm -hmm. um, is like the best of all worlds. Uh, like, to be able, for us to have a strong online presence and video, uh, but yeah, there is something about having the paper in your hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is something about having physical distribution. I, I know one thing that DeBeat's doing, uh, paying more attention to than I think the city paper perhaps did. The city paper, for people who don't know, was owned by the uh, Baltimore Sun. The boxes were kind of in this, what we in Baltimore call the, the white L, mm -hmm. uh, down the center of the city and then over into Fells Point. And, uh, and the beat, as I understand it, is going to spend a lot more time through small stores yes. and otherwise getting into the areas where, you know, black working class people live. Mm -hmm. And uh, so f that's great for us, too, because we want to be known in those areas. Um, so it was just, it was the, like I say, it was the best of all worlds to be able to partner with a print publication and continue what we're doing.